Hi guys. I wanted to go over the books that I have read this month. And, oh, I wasn't thinking about that. Shoot. <laughs> I don't even remember what the ratings are for the stuff I read. Anyway, I'm going to go over the physical books and then I'll go over the Kindle books. The first one was Star Cross by Josephine Angelini. This was a book that was for a club on Goodreads, or group on Goodreads. I was supposed to read another book, like this verse, this book versus another book. I didn't read it because I had already read it, um, but I had read it so long ago I probably really should have, but I was trying to focus on other books, so I didn't. But I did read this one, and it was the first time that I read it. And I actually thought this was pretty decent. Uh, I think I gave it a four out of five stars because I enjoyed the fact that it was about mythology, but it didn't like completely keep my attention like I thought it was going to. Like I thought I was going to fly through it and I really didn't fly through it. I mean, I, I read it, I don't even remember how fast I read it, but it wasn't like a really long time, but I just thought that I would go through it a lot faster than what I did. Um, it's about a 16 year old girl who doesn't know what she is and she finds out that she's actually something special and there's a guy that she meets and really there's like an ancient type curse I'm gonna call it that which maybe that's what they call it yeah that makes it so they're really not supposed to be together but of course we all know that when people like that meet they want to be together and so that's what this is and I need to read the second book so I know what happens but it wasn't like the best story in the world but yeah I enjoyed it for the mythology of it the next is a Goodreads book as well and it was and then there were none by Agatha Christie I read this a long long time ago I I still feel like I was in middle school when I read it um so I really didn't remember a whole lot at all. I mean, I kind of just knew the premise of it, but that was it. And I really, I really enjoyed this. I think I gave it four out of five stars because why I docked it a star is I kind of missed the description. Like, they were in this house, but we never really got a description of this house. They were on an island. We never really got a description of the island. I wanted to know more about what that island looked like, what that house looked like. I kind of missed that. Um, I never realized I would, but I, I did. I missed that. And so that's why I decided I would give it four out of five stars. I really did enjoy it, though. Uh, I definitely would read it again. It's just a story about uh, ten people getting invited to an island, and one by one, they get murdered. Um, it's based on a, the Ten Little Indians, I think is what it is, Ten Little Indians, uh, nursery rhyme, um, I, which I thought was kind of neat that that's how it did and how they were trying to get, keep the murders according to that, um, which it didn't quite meet that in my opinion, but I don't know. I really enjoyed it and it's definitely one that I'm going to keep a hold of because I will probably read it again. The next was another Goodreads thing. I think it was like a coming of age story and I chose An Abundance of Catherines by John Green. Looking for Alaska was just okay for me. I didn't think it was that great of a book, but this book I really enjoyed and I think I did give it a four out of five. If I didn't give it a four, I gave it a three. I can't remember, but I liked this because it's a story about a guy who ends up dating 19 Catherines. Um, if you read it, you'll know why I did that. So he has 19 relationships um, with Catherines. And this last Catherine broke up with him and now he's going on a road trip because that's what his friend kind of suggested. And this is the story of what happens on that road trip. I enjoyed it because they were so nerdy. I That's why I enjoyed it. Um, in my head, even though it didn't quite match up, but in my head, I kept thinking of Sheldon. That's just how I made it through the book. Like, I didn't have to, I guess, but I think that's what made it better for me was I was imagining Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory, which this guy doesn't really match up with that guy at all. 
But it just made it better for me by doing that. Um, he's very, very smart. He's supposed to be... He's He calls himself not a genius. He's supposed to be a project, prodigy. But he's he's a genius. He is. Um, I don't know. I just enjoyed it. It was just kind of a fun little read. and definitely was a lot better than Looking for Alaska. So, I read that. The next is Get Well Soon by Julie Halpern. I loved this book. In fact, I think possibly I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. I wish I could remember and I should have checked before I started the video, but I didn't. This is a story about a 17 or 18 year old girl. She might be 17. Cause I, I just kept feeling like she was like a junior or a senior in high school, but I'm not really sure. I can't even remember if it was said exactly, but it's about a teenage girl who her parents decide to send her to what they call a mental hospital or a mental institution. I don't remember what she calls it. But anyway, she is so depressed that they send her there. Now, when I first read the back of this, I thought it was because she was anorexic or bulimic, maybe. She is actually overweight, and I don't really know if that's the source of her depression or not, or if she's just depressed and overweight. Um, I thought this was so good. This, I think it's supposed to be kind of based on the author's experience when she was younger, when she went into a mental hospital. It just sounded like you were reading what a teenager would be saying. The word choices that she used, some of them I just didn't agree with. That R word makes me upset. But yeah, it's something a teenager would say. So I really felt like I was in the mind of a teenager as I was reading this. I really enjoyed it. There were relationships, there were friendships, there was a, this young girl who finally finds a world where she kind of fits in and uh, she feels a little better about herself. So I don't know, I just really enjoyed it. If you enjoy reading about like mental institutions and that type of thing, uh, I do think that you would really like this. Obviously this is contemporary, it's not um, historical in any way because there's a lot of historical ones like asylums and all that and those are really good too but this is um, contemporary and I enjoyed it. The next is the companion book of Perfect Chemistry. It's not really a series I guess. Rules of Attraction by Simone Elkeles and once again I really enjoyed this book. Once again I do not remember if it was a four or five star. But this is the story of the first guy, which I cannot think of his name right now, Alex, or Alejandro. Um, this is the story of his younger brother, Carlos. And he ends up getting himself into trouble, being sent back to the United States from Mexico by his mom, having to go live with his older brother in Colorado, and getting himself in trouble again, even though it was kind of not his fault. And his story about falling in love with, what is her name? Kiara or Kiara, I don't know how you say her name, but anyway, this is the story of that. And I really enjoy these books. I think that Simone does a really good job of writing them. And I just enjoy them because they're light fluffy reads that still have a mix of like bad boy stuff happening that kind of gives it a little darker edge. So I definitely recommend this. I think it's really good. The next is Kira, Kira Cass's The Siren, If I Could Speak. This was another read from Goodreads. Um, one of the groups was supposed to be reading this. And I have not read the selection. I have the series on my bookshelf, but I have not read it. <laughs> this, however, was fabulous. I think I gave it a four out of five stars. I didn't give it five stars because there were some things that bothered, no. Maybe I did give it five. This one was hard for me. I went back and forth with this between a four and a five star. And now I almost feel like I did end up giving it a five star anyway. Uh, this is the story about a siren. <laughs> uh, a young girl who gets turned into a siren and her life and what she has to go through. And on the back it talks about, you know, uh, her meeting a guy and she really can't be with him. But yet... She's waited her whole life for this. And so that's what this story is about. I thought it was fabulous. Now, there are two points that bothered me. Let's see if I can remember them. Number one is, 
How did they get the money to survive? I know one of the girls sold her paintings, but how do the other girls survive? Like, where do they get their money from? The second is, what's this guy's name? I cannot remember. Akinley, I think is his name. Akinley, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, decides that he thinks there's something different about this girl that it would have to be supernatural or something, but I personally did not think that she did much of anything to make him think that. It was just a little too convenient right there. Oh, yeah, this girl has something different about her. I think she's, like, supernatural or something. Like, it just, I, I didn't see where she gave that much away for him to think that. So I don't really know. But other than that, I think I did end up giving it five out of five stars because I just enjoyed it so much, and I just put those issues aside because I enjoyed it so much. I really, really enjoyed this. This was a different type story than I have ever read. And the last physical book, and I'm already at 10. That's awful. Uh, Wicked As They Come by Delilah S. Dawson, a blood novel. This was fabulous. I did give it a 4 out of 5. I didn't give it a 5 out of 5. Um, this is like steampunk. A girl, a young lady. She's probably a young lady. Because I think she might be like 25 or something. Finds a locket. The locket sends her to an alternate universe. It's essentially like our world. Um, it does have a London, but like other countries are called something different. Like America is like Almenica or something. I can't remember. And like France is like Francia or something. I don't know. Like they have different names. So it's like an alternate universe, but yet it's set back in the Victorian times. Um, and she was called there by this guy, which this guy really doesn't look like the guy that's described in the book. But we're just going to say it's this guy. And it's kind of their story of what happens. He is a bloodman, which is kind of like a vampire, but not really. Because he's not dead. He's not. It's just, it's very different. Um, other than the fact that he, he drinks blood to survive and to live. But I thought this was really, really good. I did read... Um, the novella before this, which I'll have to talk about that later. I might have to just do a whole separate video because we're already at 12 minutes. Um, this was very, very good. I have the second book already. Like, I had this one in the second book on my shelf. So, I'm going to go ahead and read the two novellas that come after this. And then, if I feel like it, I will start the second book. If not, I might have to take a little break from this Sang world. That's what it's called, Sang. So, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was different. Uh, if you like vampires, I don't know if you're going to get the same effect if you read this. Yes, they drink blood to survive, but it's a totally different world. Uh, there are mermaids, there are ghosts, there are sea monsters. Uh, it's just very interesting. I really enjoyed it, and I do recommend it. And I think I'm just going to have to do a so or completely different video for the ebooks that are in. So that's all for now and I will see you guys later.